All right, let's go ahead and review the elevator problem. So the fact is that when we're on an elevator, we have the uh, reaction force pointing up and the gravity force pointing down, or its weight. Uh, weight and gravity force are identical. And a couple of terms that we use in IV. First of all, um, there's this thing called the apparent rate, which is what the weight seems to be, which is what the scale reading is. And then there's the real weight. And the real weight is the force of gravity on the object. The real weight is always m times g. This never changes. And this actually can change. And so what we're going to do is look at the elevator problems that we did in class. And I'll actually also take a look at the homework. So this is the standard problem. We have a two kilogram object at rest on a scale on the elevator floor. Um, the elevator starts to ascend with this acceleration. We want the weight, the apparent weight. We want to know if the object feels heavier or lighter. And then we want to know the speed of the elevator at the end of 1.5 seconds. So first, um, let's draw a force diagram or a free body diagram. We've got the reaction force pointing up. We've got the weight pointing down. Now it has an acceleration of 0.5 meters per second squared upwards. So this is how the free body diagram translates into, a, into an equation that we can write down. So this, again, is accelerating. That means the forces do not balance. So we do have a net force. So we have the normal upward force competing with the weight and the effect is that the elevator accelerates upwards. So we're going to end up getting R minus 2 times 10. Fg is m times g. Please don't forget that. And that's going to equal 2 times the acceleration, which is 0 0.5. So let's get the real weight first. So for part A, Fg is 2 times 10, which is 20 newtons. Now the apparent weight, that's why I set up this equation here, is going to be r minus 20, which is 1. So r is 21 newtons. So this is what the scale reads when we're standing on an elevator that accelerates upwards. 21 newtons is what it reads. Now if we look, this is the real weight. This is the scale reading or the apparent weight. It's bigger than the real weight. So it feels, since we got a 21 newton force, it feels heavier since 21 is greater than 20. Finally, the elevator accelerates for 1.5 seconds, so we want the speed. So for part D, we're going to use V is A T plus U. V is the unknown. A is 0 0.5. The time it travels for is 1.5 seconds, and U is 0. So we end up getting a speed at, the top, at, at that 1.5 second mark of 0 0.75 meters per second. Now we're moving at a steady speed. So if we're moving at a steady speed, that means we don't have acceleration. So the weight, Fg, is mg, which is 2 times 10, which is 20 newtons. But now check this out. We have the reaction force competing with the weight. But since there is no acceleration, these forces balance. So in this case, R actually does equal mg. We do get 20 newtons. This is a trick question. It feels the same. Now, how far does the elevator travel if it ascends for another four seconds traveling at this speed here? Well, now we can basically use the dirt formula, D equals R times T. That's going to be 0 0.75 times four seconds. We end up getting three meters worth of distance. This is maybe not the best elevator in the world. All right, continuing with question number three. Uh, the weight of the object, you notice how it doesn't change. 2 times 10, 20 newtons. Now we decelerate at a rate of 0.5 meters per second as we, meters per second squared as we approach the top. So we've got our weight, we've got our reaction force. R minus Fg still equals m, but now the acceleration's negative. So we have the reaction force minus 20 equals 2 times negative 0.5. So R ends up being 19 newtons. So it actually feels lighter. How far does the elevator travel as it's stopping? Um, so we don't have a time. So for part D, we can use V squared is U squared plus 2AS. 
v squared is 0 because it stops, equals the 0 0.75 squared from the previous part plus 2 times negative 0 0.5 times s. So we end up getting, um, I think it's about 0.75 or 0.56. Let me just check that out. 0.56. So we end up getting s equal to 0 0.56 meters. Now, number four and five, we start descending, so going downward, so that's negative acceleration. The weight, Fg, two times 10, again, where 10 is the acceleration due to gravity or the gravitational strength, that's 20 newtons. The apparent weight is the scale rating, that's R minus Fg is m times a, that's R minus 20 equals two times negative 0.5. Um, R is going to end up being 19 newtons once again when we solve. So you should do that algebra to verify that that's 19 newtons. Does the object feel heavier or lighter? It's going to feel lighter. And then how far does the elevator travel if it is accelerating to a descent speed of 1.5 meters per second? So for part D, we'll say V squared is U squared plus 2AS. 1.5 squared is 0 squared plus 2 times negative 0 0.5 times s. And um, I guess if we want to kind of be clear here, um, we can say that s is also negative since it's descending. I'm just going to use absolute values here in a problem like this, um, but we're going to end up getting about 2.25 meters for s. All right. And uh, that's number four. Finally, for number five, we're going to stop. Now, in order to stop, we need an upward acceleration to stop a falling elevator. Okay? So the weight is still 20 newtons. The apparent weight, so R minus Fg equals M times plus 0 0.5. That's R minus 20 equals 1. R is 21 newtons. We do feel heavier. And how far do we travel as we stop? Again, our speed as we fell is 1.5 meters per second. Our final speed is zero. Our acceleration is negative 0 0.5. So V squared is U squared plus 2AS. Zero squared is 1.5 squared plus 2 times negative 1 times S. So S ends up being... 2.25 meters to stop. So that is the elevator portion of our homework.